All right, I'm going to do a tarot reading and an astrological analysis for the fire signs. If you are rising sun, moon, or have any placements in fire element in your zodiacal chart or progressions, then this may resonate with you. Now it's covering the Pisces full moon, which was last night, the super moon, the super blue moon, seven degrees Pisces with that Saturnian balsamic phase conjunction. Very interesting energy. So I'm going to uh, do the reading first and then we'll go into the astrology where I'll cover all fire signs afterwards. And I'm using the Woodward Tarot deck. And uh, I'm going to do a nine card spread with a bottom card and a cut card to top it off. And uh, whenever you find this message, if anything resonates, just uh, go with it. If it doesn't resonate, well, words are just um, inferred. You know, we find the meaning to the symbology of life. That's the gift of our ignorance, I suppose. All right, so I was pre-shuffling here. I got a sense of the energies. I have a lot of fire in my chart. And it's a long cycle. I feel this is a long cycle coming. We're in change in times now. The disillusionment of uh, old values, old illusions. We're starting to understand the resonance of our projections. And we're starting to see the differences between us and the world around us, the echo response, where it's not quite um, in resonance with who we are here today. It's a lot of transformative energies from this Pisces full moon. I'm just going to lay out the cards first, get a feel for what they are, and then uh, we'll cover them with the camera. I'll show you. All right, we're starting to get clumsy, so I'm going to shuffle a few more times and pull them, or drop them, I should say. Now I'm learning the tarot. I'm an intuitive person. So I'm using my intuition in combination with what I know to help me decode the message. I try and let it speak to me. As always. Hmm. All right. I think I got a story here for us. All right, so we start. Now in the Woodward Tarot, they're a little bit different. I don't know why it's reverse. I got to fix that. Uranus retrograde, Mercury retrograde. We got it all going on here. So this is uh, the Archer, number seven. This is the Chariot card in the uh, Rider Waite deck. But here you can see uh, this woman She's got a fancy bow. She's about to pull the trigger on something. She's got these, uh, they look like wolfhounds, Irish wolfhounds behind her. So she might be hunting. But in life, we're always aiming at something. We're um, waiting to pull the trigger on the thing that we are pursuing. A lot of times what we're pursuing is kind of beneath us because we are always changing and growing. 
but we don't always uh, become aware of that until the processes start to form around us and they're no longer showing themselves as they once were. So she's holding the arrow. She hasn't released it yet. And she's on the look, though. She's on the lookout. And she sees something. Next card out. The Knight of Vessels. The Eel. Now, the Knight of Vessels, this is the Knight of Cups. A steady knight. This eel is flowing down the river of life. Um, slow and steady. You can see the stone there. There's an engraving of a sword. So there's a tradition to the emotional flows that have cultivated us in life. Sometimes we go with the flow. Sometimes we go against the flow. All that experience wisens us. Gives us an intuitive sense. We're able to fall into the instinctual realms and know without the details what's right and what isn't based off of how we feel. When we get caught up in the emotions, then it brings us into the mind loops and we digest those and that's when we can apply the knowledge of our experience to follow the path which feels right and leads us to where we desire. Now we got the Nine of Bows here next. This is the Nine of Wands and it's respect. This guy looks a little bit psychotic. He's been in the woods for a long time. He's probably grown some horns and he probably doesn't take too many baths, but see the way he's holding that bow and arrow? He can move around just uh, at the ready. What happens um, when we go through struggle, when we go through these fights, these hard times in life, is that we become tuned in to struggle, to strife, to um, achieving through utilizing the strengths we've cultivated in the experiences of our life. It's a good thing. It gives us fortitude. It gives us endurance. It gives us strength. But it also limits us uh, as our strengths become weaknesses because we rely on the emotional, mental loops which have gotten us from where we were to where we are now. So this kind of speaks to the first card where she's holding the arrow. She hasn't released it. She's still on the lookout, feeling into the intuitive senses, knowing that where we've come from has given us an ability to rely on our intuition. Knowing that the feelings, they never lie. Sometimes they lead us to hard truths. Sometimes they lead us to easier truths. And it makes us realize here the love. And what is the love? Well, this is the heritage of the human spirit here. This is the queen of vessels. So the queen of cups, salmon. Now, uh, it's the spirit here. The salmon, it knows where to go. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to hold, you know, because the salmon knows it's got to get to where it wants to go and it feels where that is. It's feeling the flow. Sometimes it's um, drawn to the struggle, to the strife, to the challenge, because it knows that the cultivation of human spirit is forged in the fire, or in this case, in the pressure. It's trying to get to the promised land, to the progeny of offspring. Now, the progeny of your offspring could be in your imagination. It could be in the cultivation of your values. It could be in the cultivation of what you want to bring to existence. She knows when to jump, when to swim, how to swim. Knows that the trials and tribulations which have uh, came before have helped forge her intuition, her instincts, and her abilities to to go through these hard times. So she's swimming upstream to the promised land. She has a dream. She may not know exactly what it is, but she has a sense of it. 
and following her intuitive flow. So that Queen of Vessels is followed by the King of Arrows, which is the King of Swords. And this is the King Fisher, it's a bird. So you can see the King of Bow or the um, King of Arrows here, it's flying over still waters, just looking. When you are able to settle your emotions, then the mind can settle and you can assess more clearly. You can make uh, your discernment second nature. Your judgments are right and you understand what's worth the struggle and what isn't. So this Kingfisher is looking for something of value in the emotional flows. And it's also flying towards an unknown destination here. In this depiction, it's flying towards the next card out here, which is the wheel, number 10. In the Rider Waite, that's the Wheel of Fortune. So we go from the queen to the king. Could be an alchemical wedding where you're marrying your intuition and your intellect is coming alive through that process instead of constraint to the experiences of the past and the struggles and strife. So we're able to see where our strengths can be utilized now in new ways and our weaknesses can be encouraged to be part of our living process, the cultivation of our life. So faded events. Um, this is You've got the sun and the moon here tanning this beautiful shirt here with this fancy um, wheel representing the wheel of life, the process of your life, the cultivation of your spirit. You got the waters, the still waters below. You got that foliage, that tree blooming. You've got a beautiful uh, background. And the sun and moon are uniting in the sky. This is uh, another reference to the emotions informing the intellect. So following the heart to bring the mind and the heart into balance, into order, really resonates with the astrology at this time. Now, generally, the Wheel of Fortune has the four fixed signs, Aquarius, Leo, uh, Scorpio, and Taurus. But in this um, picture, it's a combination of the cultivation and what you create out of your life. Your life is your art. It's the ultimate art. And it's a form of expression that is a gift, but it doesn't always seem like it. Which is um, probably the reason why it is a gift, because we sense the value in what we cannot find, and we work and strive for that sometimes. Now, after the Wheel of Fortune, we have the Knight of Bows, and this is the fox. Wily, cunning, understands when to move and when to rest, how to move and how to engage with this life, with the world. Foxes are a little bit leery, but they use their intuition, their instincts. If you meet a fox in the woods, if it's not rabid, which most of them aren't, and you're calm, they approach you. In this picture, this fox is curious and happy. You can see it's just kind of um, rummaging around through the woods, and he looks like he sees something and he's smiling at it. So you may be finding uh, your passion in life and re rekindling the curious spirit within you, the childlike expression of life we hold when we're young, the uh, pure, authentic expression. So you might be moving forward with something that feeds your passions, nourishes your spirit. And that brings us to the Two of Stones, the balance. Now this is the Two of Pentacles equivalent in this deck. This says challenge. Now you see these two wild hares. They're doing the uh, happy dance. Looks like they're fighting, but they could be playing. They could be dancing. There's many ways to look at life and look at challenges. 
Um, and our results are oftentimes dependent on how we're looking at it. And we oftentimes limit ourselves to the experiences of the past because when we are young and when we're ignorant, we're learning. We're always learning. But we get programmed through the pain, programmed through the experiences. So the challenge is overcoming expectations trying to tune into the childlike, curious, authentic expression of ourself and move forward with that spirit. When you have the right spirit um, fueling your psyche, fueling this avatar, this mind, machine, body, you cultivate good things in this world and you can create balance through any kind of environment, whether that be struggle, strife, this kind of um, experience or whether you are flowing with the times with the tides with the currents so sometimes you can find the balance in what it is you're pursuing and the challenge actually helps ground us now that leads us to the six of arrows now this is the six of swords transition here now you can see this uh, figure in this swan boat. Now we've got six arrows pointing towards a circle here on the sail. We're going with the wind. We're following our intuition through the choppy waters of this world. And the wind is informing our minds, our thoughts, our thinking, because we're centered within ourselves. Uh, pursuing that which nourishes our spirit, feels right, feeds our desires, we make our mistakes wise in that process. In the back, you see the moon over a rocky cliff. You see the edifice of something that has been constructed. Everything that we've built, all the experiences that we've accumulated, we stack them up, we create these towers and if we honor that rather than the lived experience of life, we sit there worshiping the stone monolith. Well, this figure is um, done with that process, knows that that process is innately within them and is uh, enlivened, encouraged, and spirited to move forward knowing that it can recreate anything it has already created. Now that leads us to the bottom card, six of bows here. And here it says abundance. Now this is success in the standard um, rider weight deck. It's uh, the guy with the wreath on the horse, the crowd, the crowd, the villagers are cheering him on. They're about to be anointed, either married to something or given a great honor. Well, in this, it is more about what we feel within ourselves, the fire that we've uh, cultivated and how we carry that forward, how we honor ourselves, knowing that all mistakes, all past experiences are part of the process of learning and that we're cultivating wisdom through applying our experience into knowledge in lived form. That brings about the best results. That brings about true abundance because you feel at one with yourself and you're able to share that with others naturally without trying to put on a show. And when others uh, tempt you, you don't need to give away your fire because you already know that it's settled within you and it's, uh, it's best for those to admire from afar if they can't handle the heat. And that brings us to this challenge here, number 20, the great bear. So this is the equivalent of judgment. Now look at this bear standing over the cave. That's the dweller on the threshold in a way. But since we're coming from the outside world, the outside world gives us challenges. It gives us reasons to go within. And we have to face the beast within ourselves in order to gain the glory gain that fire, cultivate that fire. But we don't get to this point until we're ready. So you know if you feel there's great challenges in this world, within yourself, you know you're at a changing time. You have this opportunity. You have this process 
that you're going through. It's a season of change. And we got the Big Dipper up there in the background, the Pole Star. When you follow the light within yourself, it leads you to your truth, your authentic expression. And you have to feel that authenticity to get to this point. So if other people can't see it, if other people have preconceived notion or judgments, it doesn't matter because they're, they're not here. You are. You're the only one walking through this door and you're facing your fears because you know that you've done the work. You know your aim is right. You've got the mind and the heart in tune. These are changing times. And uh, you have that curious, natural expression and spirit that you can bring forward into this world to help lighten it up for, if not only yourself, others that you care about, and even those you don't care about. That's the gift of the golden rule, reciprocity. All right, so let's get into the chart real quick. Now, this Aquarius full moon was last night. It's set for Minneapolis Central Standard Time in the U.S. Wherever you were or are, you could look at where it was in your epigenetics, your local environment, to see which houses were primarily activated. And uh, it might give you a little more information. But we're going to look at the fire signs here. So this is an interesting combination. We've got water and earth. So Pisces is the spirit which informs Aries. And Leo is the spirit which informs uh, Virgo. Leo is the, the, um, the sun is the ruler of Leo. And Mars is the ruler of Aries. So Neptune here just had an opposition with Mars, and we'll get into that in a second. But let's talk about this um, transit here. It's a full moon. You can see they're opposing. Now the moon has this balsamic phase conjunction with Saturn here. Balsamic phase conjunction is basically the closing of cycles. This is a static. It's an image caught in time. And when you look at the image, you can see the energetics which are expressing through us, through the world, micro to macro or macro to micro. Sometimes we need external events to drive us within ourselves so that we can find the language of the symbols of life. Sometimes we bring those symbols into our expression in this world and we change life. And oftentimes it's a little of both. We oscillate unconscious and conscious. So it's the emotional authority here. We're finding where the authority of external events or preconceived notions or egoic constraints because other people needed or expected something of us are fading away. And we're able to come into the authority of our own sovereign expression of life. And that information is being realized through our emotional flows, which is based on our feelings. What is the pure expression of the feeling that you're bringing into this world now? We've got North Node just went into Aries. How are we doing us in new ways? That affects all other things. Um, this world is reciprocal to the expression and the feelings that we have within ourselves. When we find those dynamics don't jive with others in the world around us, that's when the challenges rise up. That's when we know we're on the right path towards our uh, victory. So this is opposing the sun. The sun has a black moon Lilith balsamic phase conjunction. So black moon is coming into union with the sun. Black moon Lilith, it is the repression of our feminine energies, the anima. It is the uh, female rebel. It is the taboo. It is a thing that we hold back because other people can't handle it within themselves. And oftentimes we can't handle our own shadows. The things that we've repressed, 
How do we bring that forward authentically, naturally, without burning others of the world down? That's what we're coming into an understanding through our emotional authority at this time. Now let's talk about Mercury here. Mercury just went retrograde last week. Mercury is in a... Um, well, Pallas Athena is in a new phase conjunction with Mercury, which is higher wisdom intellect it is the power of the perception and we're digesting past experiences in relational dynamics old um, friends or lovers or colleagues or business opportunities or dreams may be coming back to us old ways of relating to ourself and this world might be coming back to us either in physical form or emotional form or mental form so that we can reassess what it is and recognize that it was a part of our process a static and the ever-flowing dynamic of life so we're becoming more aware of this and with that Hermes Trismegistus trining Uranus here is uh, lighting the torch Promethean fire so that we can see our way forward in a more natural authentic expression of true value now let's talk of these nodes real quick. North node in Aries, south node in Libra. Now north node in Aries, this is doing us in a new way. Now we can um, embody our strengths and see if it brings us forward. And uh, if it brings us into old loops, then we know we can do our old ways or our old we can utilize our old strengths in new ways <laughs> and by doing that by virtue of doing that you do old dynamics you do relational dynamics in new ways so you can see where you fall into loops of relational um, dynamics where so we have old friends who have the same patterns that they once did maybe they uh, do drugs or maybe they are negative or um, they're stuck in the myopia of their situations and they want you to hold them in that process but by doing that you hold yourself as well so now you can show them that you're no longer interested in placating or holding their problems but you're interested in doing them approaching them in new ways so you can show them by doing you new by relate Relating to you in new ways, you show them how they may relate with themselves in new ways. And it's not necessarily through language, but through action. Libra and Aries are cardinal, and they're very active energies. Libra is air, the mind. Aries is fire, the passion, the spirit. So now let's look at the North Node ruler here, Mars. Mars just crossed over the Libra point. It's in the Saturnian degrees of Libra. Just come out of the opposition with Neptune and Pisces, the ruler of this full moon. So the experiences we've been going through, particularly the last few weeks, but it's a long cycle. I get the sense that this has been a lifelong process for most of us. We're coming into understanding the power of our authentic expression and how we can bring that into this world through relating with ourselves more authentically. So we don't need to force anything. We're able to see perception, um, different sides of a coin, so that we can choose which one is reciprocal. And we make that balanced assessment through what feeds and nourishes our spirit here. What heals the wounded mind? We got Chiron at 19 degrees in Aries. So how are you healing yourself through finding and expressing and holding the authenticity of your fire? Now we've got Venus here, south node ruler, in Leo, in the fire sign. She's stationing um, direct here in a few days, and she'll be going on the shadow path. Now she's on the north node of Neptune here, which just informed Mars. And she will be in a chemical wedding with Juno, which is um, your lover, essentially, your partner. Now, we find union with ourselves through other people and through this world. 
So it might be a combination of that for you. Maybe um, old friends or lovers or new friends or lovers may come into your life. Or maybe you may realize what you had repressed within yourself is all you needed in this world to move forward in a more whole and authentic expression of your own spirit. Now compromise with Venus. It's what we compromise a lot in relations. Maybe now you no longer are willing to compromise those things which honor and nurture your pure expression, the child within, the purity of your spirit, the thing that you had when you were young, that you had to hold down and protect so the world wouldn't blow it out, put it out. Now we're more confident, we have an understanding of our boundaries and how to um, push those forward without stomping on another or burning the world down with our fire. So this is a natural progression. I see this as being, um, this Mars Venus here is marrying the emotional, intuitive feeling with the thinking, rational expression of our mind bringing us to this so now we've got series here also coming into a balsamic phase conjunction with the south node so this is the harvest what it is we put ourselves in in relation to this world what dynamics come to us when we meet those dynamics fueled by the passion and authenticity of ourselves we harvest wisdom, we harvest experience. We know that we don't have to make old mistakes any longer. And if other people can't handle the way that we express, and we know that we are um, balanced and being living in accordance with the golden rule, we're reciprocating a balanced expression, if they can't handle it, then that's something that they're digesting, and we don't have to hold that or even worry about it. It's on them. So now uh, let's look at Pluto here. Pluto here, it's in a reaching trine. Um, Uranus is just going retrograde. It's an out of sign trine with Mars. We just had that grand Earth trine. It was pretty loose, but it was still in effect. And so we are forming spirit through transforming what we thought was us based off of traditional relational dynamics, societal expectations, familial ancestral expectations. How do we transform that through expressing the purity of our expression in Leo? Leo is the working, um, or actually Capricorn is the working transformation of Leo. So it is how we... Um, cultivate ourselves, how we swim through these currents to find the calm waters from which we can lay new foundation. And that's uh, what we do to feed the authentic expression of ourselves in this world. Where do we put that? So now we may have questions as to where we're going, but it is um, part of learning and adapting to the intuitive flows beyond the emotional loops. So Pluto, it's transformation, it's the soul's evolutionary intention, if you follow EA. And Pluto brings gifts to those who face their fears, face their challenges, their hang-ups, knowing that you have all this experience and you know how to deal with situations without reverting into old loops because you've seen where they get you and they see that um, when you relate with yourself differently, other people relate with you differently. And this is part of that Libra trine where Libra um, has Mars here now. And Libra and Capricorn generally square, but when you get these uh, early degrees, Libra last degrees, Capricorn, we see a reversal of the energy and expression of new ways coming into existence. And Pluto is sextiling Neptune. Neptune was informing 
Mars, and Neptune is sextiling Uranus. So we're doing old values in new ways. We're reassessing, we're digesting what those values are, and we're bringing a pure expression of ourself forward through that process. Now we have Jupiter here in uh, Taurus. Jupiter is squaring Venus. So we're expanding the value of our own experiences. We're starting to see them in new ways. We're starting to understand the processes and how we can be in this world more authentically and more in balance and alignment with our values. How do we recapture the curious spirit, the childlike energy, the purity of our own expression and bring that forward? That's what we're cultivating here. So, if you are Sagittarius here, we're just going to look at the signs. We'll do Sagittarius, Aries, Leo. So, Sagittarius is squaring. The world may be bringing situations, people may be bringing situations to uh, help you to recognize where you are in this world. And, or you may be bringing those situations to life through pushing forward in this world towards your desires, towards what feels right to you. So if you put yourself in turbulent or uncomfortable situations, you grow through that process. You're helping Mars here. You're helping your mind find language for these emotional currents so that your feelings can be honored more authentically. And it's also you got the square with um, Neptune. The mutable signs... They're magical. They bring the cardinal and the fix together through life, through action. And it is um, a balance of ebb and flow, following your intuition and being willing to make mistakes, knowing that you're always growing and learning in the process anyway. So as long as you make them wise and you're not transgressing others for any gain or um, reasons other than authentic expression, then it's all right. And you've got this uh, Taurian energy down here with Jupiter, the ruler of Sagittarius, and Uranus. So um, if you think about this, Sagittarius is the transformation of Taurus. The values we cultivate here formulate the beliefs we carry forward in the world. So we transmute all those experiences of the past and we bring those forward. And we're not afraid to... Uh, to flow with the change of the beliefs because it reflects where we are within ourselves. And as we do that, we find the symbology and the language of life is speaking to us. The synchronicities rise, the people rise up, the situational dynamics change. And it informs us in the process. And uh, Sag is the spirit of Capricorn. It's what we, the beliefs are what we build upon. So we're transforming our beliefs here. We're transforming what we build upon through our updated beliefs based on these changing values. Now let's go down to Aries. Pisces is informing Aries here. The spirit is being realized in new ways. We're healing the wounds of ourself, of our own perceptions, the psyche, the mental loops, the um, instinctual programming, the short circuits. I've got a lot of Aries energy, so I know this very well. And it's uh, how do we respond rather than react? Well, we're, we don't have to actually intellectualize it because we're coming into union with the authenticity of our wounds. And we're finding the value there and how we've grown through those processes and cultivated the strength, the endurance, the vision to know what is true value and to recognize opportunities as they arise. North Node is destiny and it is um, what we're cultivating in life. And we cultivate through desire. We cultivate through challenge. We cultivate through fire. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't uh, settle down and feed into, feel into the emotional flows and loops and try and get to the true authentic expression of our feelings.
but it means we do so through action, through living life. And this is giving us a spiritual, intuitive sense of how we can do that by finding what is in alignment with ourselves. And that's the spirit that's bringing us into the value changes. And it is, um, you can look at these dynamics clockwise or counterclockwise. They're both, you know, it's not one dimensional. It's multifaceted. Now let's go to Leo here. Leo, Venus, just had the retrograde. It's been rough. We're coming into understanding what we've repressed within ourselves. We're understanding the value of our own expression. Now, Leo is the working, opening quincunx in conjunction with the Pisces energy here. And the moon here is in a perfect quincunx with Juno. And a few hours later, quincunx to Venus. So, working dynamics of things you don't know. Ignorance is being realized as new exp um, expressions of your value. And we feed the uh, fire within ourselves through the experiences we have, through the things we release. We scoop that up and we burn it in the prior. And we bring that fire to a, a warm, energetic. <laughs> how do I say that? We learn how to carry the fire without burning ourselves or the world down around us. And that's the spirit we bring forward in to the sun here in Virgo. So we may be feeling in our bodies, feeling in our service to ourselves and the service to this world, how we can bring uh, authenticity to this world in the world of mimicry, in the world of echo response. How can we be positive change, if only for ourselves? When you focus on that and you change for the better for yourself, you change for others as well. They see that energy and they reciprocate with that. And you're sextiling the south node here, which is creative, expressive dynamics. You're reaching into the past um, through facing the future in a new, authentic way here with Aries. So it is a um, cultivation of the fire. All right, well, I hope this was uh, beneficial for you. If you want a reading with me, uh, go to my website and schedule one. But otherwise, thanks for watching, listening, and being.